Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new flight controller and I've been waiting for this to come for the longest time. It's been out of stock for a while uh, on my turn to purchase it. So this is the HGLRC F4 Flame V2. Now the previous F4 Flame when it first came out it was one of my favorite old one flight controllers. However there's a lot more old one flight controllers coming out recently. And uh, let's see how well this one stacks up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So first of all, you do get the board itself here. They give you a capacitor. This is a Sanyo, I think, capacitor. That's what it looks like. Let's take a look here. They give you some standoffs. So that's nice to see. They give you rubber grommets. Oh, it's soft mounted. I didn't even know that. And they give you a 1,000 microfarad, 35 volt Sanyo uh, capacitor. I, don't, I think it's a low ESR. I, I never really tested these, but we'll, we'll probably get a little test going for these and you get your little diagram here so that's very nice let's put these back here i don't need this thing put the grommets in put the standoffs in let's take a look at this guy all right so we have the all new hdlrc old one flight controller now, it's not super new it's been out for a while maybe like a month or so and um, i just haven't gotten gotten it on time i just received it like yesterday so let's take a look at this all right, so this is supposed to be put into your quadcopter like so if you don't want to play with the beta flight resource remapping. And um, let's take a look at this. So the battery pads are in the back. A lot of people like that. I personally prefer that also, but you know, it's just a personal preference kind of thing. You got your USB on the right. Well, that's nice to see. So the orientation looks correct. We have a QC, QC sticker here. So I guess it passed the quality check. Now let's go over the layout. Now the layout, there's something immediately that I really don't like about this board are the uh, pads for the ESC power. They're, they're pretty small. They're actually pretty tiny uh, compared to other boards. Let's see if we have a board next to us right now. Um, here's the board. Here's a speedy B. I'd highly recommend this one actually. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, their pads are about the same size, but maybe a little bit bigger, tiny bit bigger possibly. Well, there's more surface area. This has a hole in it. This is just a complete pad. The, even the, the speedy bees are a little slightly bigger, so that's always better to see. It's better current flow towards your ESC. So that's one thing, but it's not really going to affect much, really. So we have motor one right there, so that's correct. So beta flight is one, two, three, four. So that's signal one for your ESC, signal two, signal three, signal four. Perfect beta flight orientation. We have a little boo button that goes right there, so that's nice to see. And uh, let's take a look at the UARTs and everything else, really. So let's see here. So here, for some reason, we have another ground pad. I'm just double checking something here. Yeah, okay. So here we have a big ground pad and LED for, I guess, your LED. So you have your negative for your LED, 5 volt, and a signal for your LED here. This is your buzzer negative. And if you wanted to put a buzzer, you would put the negative here. And then you would put the positive here for your buzzer. TX1, RX1, I don't know where SBUS is just yet. We might see it. We'll just, yeah, the SBUS is over here. We'll figure out where it's installed. So we have a TX1, and RX1, TX6, and RX6, and RX3, and TX3. So if you were to connect, for example, IBUS or an uninverted SBUS, uh, uninverted SBUS means, means not an FR Sky SBUS, you would go ahead and connect it to any of these R's here. RX3, RX6, RX1. So you can do that right there. And uh, if you take a look here, we have another uh, pad here for motor number six. So obviously, we're going to see also motor number five very soon somewhere. But yeah, so that's nice to see. You have an extra signal for your motors. So let's flip this guy over. Well, I mean, we shouldn't really flip it over, should we? Yeah, we should actually. All right, so if we take a look here, we have the camera. Well, we'll start with here. We have ground. The yellow wire for your camera would go here. And then you have your five volt. So let's just see if we can get it to focus a little bit better here. All right. And uh, if we take a look here, this is where you would connect your camera. And this is where I would connect my VTX, which would be the negative, the yellow wire for your VTX, and the positive. Now, the positive is going to be, I truly believe it's going to be the, um, what is it called? It's going to be the battery power that's going right there. So you might be susceptible to some noise. It does have some filtration on board. Not like the previous one, but I don't, I don't know how well this is going to stack up. We're going to have to get testing on this. And uh, if we look up here, this is the area for your receivers, basically. Uh, they kind of simplified it a bit for you here. So let's just see here. How can we zoom in a little bit more? Is it possible? No. So let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay. All right. So here we have negative 
and 3.3 volts. So if you're going to use some kind of a spectrum, this is where you power your 3.3 volt right there. And if we take a look down here, we have 5 volt and uh, spectrum. You know, I think it's an uninverted S bus, and this is the inverted S bus. So this is where you put your FR sky and then you give it the 5 volt on the ground for S bus right there. And you still have, they're still rocking PPM. So if you're still using some kind of PPM receiver, uh, this is totally comp uh, compatible with it. So that's very nice to see. However, I never found motor 5. I don't know if I'm missing it or something because we had motor 6, maybe it's on the bottom. Could be, possibly. Nope, we don't have anything on the bottom. So the bottom, let's take a look at the bottom here. We do have the OSD chip right there. We have a current sensor. We have pretty big capacitors on board like really nice really fat um, a little bit dangerous too kind of because you could pop these off so be careful when you're putting this together don't be super rough on this that's one thing for sure you do have current sensing we have the 5 volt for the 5 volt regulator right here and we have the OSD right there and um, pretty minimal I think it's like a little TVS diode right there going on for it uh, there's no barometer, no nothing. You got your little boot button. I hate these boot buttons, but they tend not to break off because the other type of boot buttons usually tend to break off with me, uh, especially in the field. Uh, overall, it's a pretty minimal design, um, I think. It's not the cleanest design. I can tell you that right now. I've seen a lot better. And um, I don't know, HLRC, I think you're starting to fall off the scale here or off the, the train. Uh, because, well, I mean, it came out before the newest trends with the 9-volt regulators, but it could be still a pretty good board. I don't know if I'll, I'm going to be sticking it on the, uh, for sure, on the testing rig, and I don't know if I'm going to put it into a build and we're going to test it out, but for sure we're going to be testing it. See if it's at least susceptible to uh, OSD noise, which is OSD flickers. If it does, then you got to be a little bit extra careful with this guy. Uh, that, I think that's why they give you the 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor. So some, you know, some flight controllers are more susceptible to noise. And what happens is if they are, it usually tends to leak everywhere. For example, gyro, it'll leak into the uh, OSD, the 5 volt regulator to the OSD and just mess it all up and make all kinds of weird problems. But overall, it looks pretty nice. Um, I really can't say much until we actually stick it somewhere and then actually test it. Uh, but what they've done is, I just realized this, they put a little capacitor on each ESC basically right there. Can you see that? It's like very close. So probably go here through the cap and then go back into the system here or into the uh, from the power rail. So that's that's kind of nice. Uh, hopefully they did something all the way towards the VTX here. Uh, we might trace it out, but um, we'll see how that works out. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be testing this guy very soon, so just stay tuned. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.